What character death was satisfying to you? Macaulay Culkin's character, Henry, in The Good Son. For a moment there I thought Home Alone must have had a director's cut. The way all the Terminators died in the first two movies, the first two that died felt good because that terrifyingly intense villain you thought was undefeatable finally died. And when Arnie sacrifices himself in the lava and gives that thumbs up that really hit me in the feels. I know now why you cry. But it is something I can never do. Todd from Breaking Bad. Meth Damon. F that moon faced psycho. Get strangled on the floor where you belong. The death of Joaquin Phoenix in Gladiator. That movie made me cry at like age 10 Lameo. That final scene with him seeing his family again. Damn man. Not to make this too morbid. But I had a terminal cancer diagnosis, thankfully wrong, and I've been to the part of Italy where the scene was shot of walking through the farm fields as Russell Crowe is dying. I've pictured myself there many times. It brings me great comfort. ISF Teresov from the first John Wick movie, it was just a ref and bang. Love how matter of fact it was. Zero hesitation. Just walks up, shoots him dead, and walks away. Great scene. I think that's what made John Wick so much better than your average action flick. Less bullsh, less fluff with the character development, and less ridiculous monologuing. Just one man who kills a ref ton of people for revenge. The only plot development serves solely to hype up the killing we're about to see, and quickly gets set aside to show us more action. That scene is part of what makes it so good. The Warden from the Shawshank Redemption. The last thing he sees is that motto he'd held over everyone else. His judgment cometh and that right soon. This was the moment I knew Morgan Freeman was one of, if not the best, narrators. Amazing it wasn't planned that way when the movie was made. Glad it worked out. I like I think the last thing that went through his head other than that bullet, was to wonder how in the hell Andy Dufresne ever got the best of him. The a-hole in train to Busan who kept shoving people into zombies to save himself. I was looking for this comment. His death was 100% well deserved. I watched it just the other day and absolutely, F him. I would have liked to see him go in another way though. In the end he got bitten just like everyone else. I feel like he played the role as a selfish manifestation of what the dad would become if he did not listen to his daughter. So it's kinda cool they both make it to the last train but I think they could have driven that point home harder if the resolution was written differently. In a how. Still a good movie. Admiral Zhao. Seeing where he ended up in Locke was so unsettling though tbh. Yeah, he was a big a-hole. But damn. Imagine never dying in a place that drives you crazy forever. Every character killed by Arnold Schwarzenegger in history. Let off some steam. Bennett. Consider it a divorce. He had to split. Remember when I said I was going to kill you last? I lied. Stick around. You are one ugly mother effer. Don't forget when he kills the mutant with a big drill in Total Recall and says screw you. You're fired. True lies. The best underrated Arnie movie. And Jamie Lee Curtis in that scene is 1000% my sexual awakening. Luke from Percy Jackson. Books. It just worked so well narratively. All the deaths from that first series really felt real. They showed the consequences and tragedy of war in a way that was palatable for middle schoolers. Couldn't agree more. Luke's character was so well written. Uncle Rick managed to give a character so much depth while writing a book essentially meant for children. Respect. Macabell. The bastard deserved death a hundred times over. I shot him so many times in the balls. Went back for his body to throw it off a cliff but lost him in the river. Never have I hated a fictional character more. The answer for me will always be Hanson Die Hard. Skillfully done by Alan Rickman. It isn't Christmas till you drop hands from Nakatomi Plaza. Just don't tell the actor when he's being dropped and you'll get one of the best dying faces in cinema history. One of the best dying faces in cinema history. It's easy to forget the trajectory of a great artist when he manifested himself in the collective mind over a long, established and distinguished career. So some people might not know. And until a year ago or so, randomly Wikipedia rhyme. I didn't either. That Hans Grubber was Rickman's first on-camera role. He made the jump from theater to film by creating one of cinema's eternal greatest villains. Kai Win on Deep Space Nine. Burn. Baby. Burn. Coin in Mockingjay. Her death was dumb funny to me. Snow's reaction was the proper reaction. Lust from Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. 
holy f it was amazing the way Roy just unleashed dear hell upon that psycho B with just the flick of a lighter. It's what solidified Roy as my favorite character in the show. Mustang goes from classic Shenan rival to a perfectly autonomous character and the baddest moth affair ever with such power there. I mean, it was already established as a character. But generally that stuff has those masks and roles that are hard to shake off. In that episode Mustang tells the reader watcher hey B, I do have agency. All of Edmund Dante's enemies in the Count of Monte Cristo. He meticulously destroys each and every last one of them for what they did to him. Best revenge story ever written. Smeagol Gollum. A perfect fitting end for him. Finally free. No longer fighting all his internal battles. No longer a slave to the ring. Yeah but when that third eagle showed up for him in the movie, I don't know if it was in the books as I haven't gotten that far in reading them yet, it kinda broke my heart. He was doing so well until Faramir and I hate Frodo for not defending him more. 3-3 three, three eagles? Osh, oh I never noticed that. Guess I have to watch the three films again now. Gotta go with General Ponkrell. He deserved it. General Shepard from MW2. Five years ago. I lost 30,000 men in the blink of an eye. R.I.P. Ghost. R.I.P. Roach. Trailer in Star Wars Jedi. Fallen Order. It really shows Darth Vader in his prime. Especially since the fearless overpowered boss, Trilla, is petrified just by hearing him. Any kill by Darth Vader is satisfying, but Trilla's death is my favorite. V. From Orange is the New Black. Season 2. She was so manipulative and sociopathic. It actually made my skin crawl to watch her sometimes. And the way she went out was perfect. Imo, the actress who played her did such a good job. Darth Vader. It will always feel satisfying that he came to the light side of the force and got to see Luke with his own eyes before he died. 100% Joffrey Baratheon. Let's not forget Elena Tyrell. We all hated to see the Queen of Thorns go, but that last line was perfect. Diana Rigg was brilliant in that role. My favorite line was definitely he really was a C, wasn't he? Tell Cersei, I want her to know it was me. Thug life glasses appear, yes, her death was satisfying not in that we were glad to see her die, but even in dying she got the last word in. Over Cersei, I see your Joffrey Baratheon and I raise you Ramsay Bolton, I go all in with the freeze. Terry Pratchett's character death has always been very satisfying to me. Saving the little match girl. What better present than a future? Showing Mort the ropes of the soul release business. There's no justice. There's just us. Giving a reason to keep living. Cats. Cats are nice. And offending his individual by individual scything of souls. And grass. For what can the harvest hope for, if not for the care of the reaper man? That's all I can quote off the top of my head but there's a good one about why he's standing in for the hogfather. About how children need to believe in. Santa, as practice for believing in the big imaginary things like hope and kindness and love. Something about there not being an atom of them in the universe. And yet, you can't give her that. It's not safe. It's a sword. Fear not meant to be safe. She's a child. It's educational. What if she cuts herself? That will be an important lesson. Alright. I'm not stupid. You're saying humans need fantasies to make life bearable. Really? As if it was some kind of pink pill? No. Humans need fantasy to be human. To be the place where the falling angel meets the rising ape. Tooth fairies? Hogfathers? Little. Yes. As practice, you have to start out learning to believe the little lies so we can believe the big ones. Yes, justice, mercy, duty, that sort of thing they're not the same at all. You think so? Then take the universe and grind it down to the finest powder and sieve it through the finest sieve and then show Emmy one atom of justice. One molecule of mercy. And yet you act as if there is some idea lauder in the world. As if there is some. Some rightness in the universe by which it may be judged. Yes, but people have got to believe that. Or what's the point my point exactly you make us sound mad. No, you need to believe in things that aren't true. How else can they become? My favorite quote. Truth. Justice. Mercy. They are all lies. They're also what makes us human. When that B. Ponkrell died. RF Ponkrell. All my homies hate Ponkrell. When I play the Mass Effect trilogy, I play as heavy Paragon as I can. But, no matter how Paragon you are, 
you smash that renegade trigger with the fist of an angry god when it comes time to finish off Kai Leng and gut him with your Omnitool. That was for Thane, you son of a bee. Tom Riddle hit the floor with a mundane finality. In the end, death comes for all of us, and he was no exception. Of course, the movie managed to ruin that by giving him an ash confetti death. His book Death was so much better, reminds us that death comes for everyone just like you said. Ironically Voldy probably shortened his lifespan by playing with Horcruxes. Actually yeah, he was something like 70 years old when he died, albeit continued having his youthful, 30-40ish physique, appearance. It's a shame they had him just melt away in the movie. Like I understand showing he wasn't really human anymore and this is last fragment after losing all 7 of the others. But the impact of Tom just falling down dead like everyone else was really powerful. Maybe it just wouldn't look good on screen so they went with the Ash IDK. Maddening. The entire point of his death was hey look. We've stripped away his Horcruxes. His followers. His mystique and his profound dark magic. And now he's just dead. A plain ordinary dead guy. Slumped to the floor in a heap. He didn't deserve a weird magical floaty ending. Bellatrix Lestrange. Umbridge as an honorable mention because we all wished she was killed by those centaurs. Yes, she is one of the most frustrating characters ever. Gotta hand it to the actor though. If a villain is that evil and every word she says is infuriating in the movie like that, then you know they found the absolute perfect actor for the character. And Harry's absolute sarcastic tone and vengeful look. Perfectly ironic. Perfectly satisfying. Not my daughter. You be. Everyone in the cinema burst into applause and cheers at that line. So great. Freezer by the hands of future trunks. Not so much in terms of plot character, but more of the way he did it. Chop him into bits then disintegrate those bits. It's like the digestive system. Is it just me that is reading this thread and spoiling myself 5-6 different series books that I haven't finished yet? The crazy religious lady in the mist. Chidi and Agonai from The Good Place. This is an underrated answer. His last death wasn't because he was a terrible person or a terrible character. He was just done. It fine killed me to watch that episode. That last episode had me crying all the way through. That is how to kill a character without ruining everything they have worked for. I'm sure most of us saw it coming in that episode. It wasn't a surprise. It was just extremely bittersweet. The entire finale was dignified and exactly what we wanted for those characters. His, and the other, deaths were simply a well earned happy ending. All the final deaths in that show were so well written. Their endings signify their respective character growth so well. Spoiler alert in case someone hasn't finished watching, Chidi, who previously couldn't make a single decision was one of the first to decide that he is complete, and possibly the first one to go through the door. Even when Eleanor briefly asks him to stay, he agrees without a second thought. To honey, the most hollow person, restarted from the bottom, grew all the way, and became the only human to stand on par with angels and demons. Jason, the most spontaneous and volatile person, became a monk who's unaffected by the passage of time. And Eleanor, oh my. She became physically incapable of resting in peace until she has helped everyone she has crossed paths with. She let Chidi go, even though that ripped her apart, convinced Mindy to move on, even helped Michael, with a chance to be human. The most selfish character turned into this wholesome selfless human. This whole show was just character growths with a story that keeps resetting, with the best possible ending. PLS look past my English, not my first language. Don't know his name. But that guy who kept calling his girlfriend a skank for Breaking Bad. The ATM head crush ASMR was a bit disgusting though. Percy from the Green Mile. Damn. I totally had a brain fart. He was committed. It was still satisfying that he got possessed and killed Wild Bill and then got committed though. Ramsey Bolton. I enjoyed watching John beat the living shout of him and Sansa exacting her revenge was the icing on top. The affair that killed John Wick's dog. Maul when he died in Star Wars Rebels, losing to OI-1 and how it was executed made it one of if not the most poetic death in all of Star Wars. I was thinking him too. Not satisfying like yeah I hate that shed they deserved it, but satisfying like, yeah, that's really fitting and I like it a lot as an end to this character. Not exactly a death, 
but when Hans Lander gets his forehead carved was a pretty good send off for such a well written man acted villain and pretty satisfying that that slimy bastard too. James Logan Howlett Aka Wolverine, it was a perfect ending to series, Hugh Jackman did an incredible job playing him, Charles, however, had me sobbing, he deserved to die peacefully in his sleep. Walter White from Breaking Bad, it was just so poetic I almost cried, with Baby Blue playing in the background, he died where he felt alive, a meth lab, truly the best ending I've ever seen. Stormfront from The Boys on Amazon, while it could be that she is still alive, that laser carving of her evil A was sweet harmony. The governor from TWD, dude just didn't know how to share and pull the massive if I can't have it, no one can on the prison. Light Yagami, it was sort of but a sweet cause it meant the end of the series but also he was insane. Of course he only becomes a Shinigami after but hey whatever, dang this sort of blow up, thanks for the awards. Also just to clarify Light becoming a Shinigami is just a theory, seemed plausible to me though but to each their own. What I love about it is how pathetic he is at the end, when you take away his power. He's just a megalomaniac with no mystique left trying to weasel his way out the consequences of his actions. He goes out like a true to life narcissist knowing he's lost and being unable to accept it. Gus fringing Breaking Bad. Franz Ferdinand. 